Good to have you two here. It's the end of the season and we're going to talk a little bit of how that panned out for all of us, how the three of us felt and the team uh, throughout the year. Maybe let's start with, um, with the beginning, the winter. Mike, how did you feel uh, that was coming along? Well, I guess through the normal development we get over the winter, it felt good. To then sort of roll into winter testing and to find some fairly major problems with the car was pretty dispiriting. I remember that we were discussing it in, in October and how exciting it was to find performance through the floor and that the real trick was how low can we actually get the car. I guess that sent us off to the wrong trajectory. I think, um, I think the aerodynamics of these cars are such that they want to run really low to the ground and I think what we were finding in the tunnel was, was huge gains with the car operating in that way. And I think when you look back at the season in hindsight, we pushed too hard in that direction and I think we've learnt a lot as a result of that. Any normal season up to now, you've been able to look at sort of what comes out of Howell's World and the power unit, what comes out of um, the wind tunnel and also out of our simulation and, and know where you're going to be with the car and normally we start the season with a pretty good understanding of where our performance is going to be relative to the previous car. Obviously you don't know what the competitors are going to do but you know where you're going to be and I think this is the first season I can remember in a long time where we started with a problem we didn't predict. For me personally, it was an interesting journey because obviously we had a massively successful run of eight consecutive championships and we knew the day would come where it's going to be difficult, but coming out with not understanding uh, what was happening and, and it's a relative game. Some of our competitors understood or seemed to have um, a high a performing car. That was particularly difficult, that it took us so many months to filter out and say, well, this is what the fundamental problem is, and it cost us the season, in effect. The problems we saw with balancing, I think, were there across the grid, but to different extents, and I think the position we found ourselves in at the worst end of that extreme made life very difficult for us. My role, starting as a new technical director, that was a, not a great position to be in, but I think what, what's pleased me is the sort of the response to that. I think the response to the team, the way the team has stuck together and have got on and tried to understand that. The progress we made is a bit unpleased with. The sort of position we found ourselves at, at the beginning of the season, that was really challenging. Only in the toughest of environments you, you learn the most and it would have been uh, maybe a different story, come in, continue to win. But I think this is uh, from a personal development point and as a leader, super important and I'm sure about that, as difficult it is, as it was sometimes. I think we've all said that we'll only know how good a team we are when the difficult times come. I think you learn the most from those and hopefully that's what we carry into future years. We came out at the beginning of the season with some wobbles on the power unit as well. We didn't like certain aspects of the deployment or the drivability of the power unit. And, and whilst in a frozen environment, you and your team, you were able to really, to really add on performance, cope with the difficult environment of a bouncing car that was breaking your engine. And still, we were super reliable and the engine was performing very well uh, towards the mid of the season and, and, and the end. So how, how was your journey at the beginning of the season? At the beginning of the season, the, the two big things that we had was, was firstly that the, the PE was going to get frozen um, and it was going to be a hardware freeze and that's what we were going to be using for, for the next three years. And, and so we had a really big development um, program over the whole of last year and, and through that winter and, and just trying to make sure we landed that was a real big effort, a really, really big effort. And then the, the second thing we had was the, uh, the change in the fuel regulations, which, which we knew was going to be a hit for us and we expected to be a, a hit for others. But the same as the, the chassis world, with those two quite large changes, we just didn't know where we were going to end up. When we hit the track, I think there was a bit of disappointment and, and some things that we could certainly put right. And we knew we couldn't do it through hardware, which has been our, our way of, of developing things for the past however many years. So we had to really go back and, and reconsider how, how were we going to develop ourselves out of that position and, and sort of after the first race or so, going back and saying, look, our part of this is to get some more performance and get some better dr drivability and, and we need to add that at the same time the car's being developed and, and that's how we'll, we'll get out of this position. We all had to look around and say, well, how, how do we do that in this new, in this new world? And that, was the, that then became the, um, the excitement of the season, was, was seeing how we could change the way that we could develop this PU, even though the hardware's frozen, to get more performance from it. 
when the hardware is frozen, it becomes so much more complex um, to fine tune the power unit and every driver also wants a different way of um, interacting, with, interacting with the power units. But um, honestly, how you've been able to just progress thro throughout the season is, has been really important cornerstone in, in, in the, with the working of, of all the team together. And you've supported the chassis guys who came under a lot of pressure with the obvious behavior of the car and you just continue to just deliver a solid job and, 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 and push the car's performance up. And what's becoming clearer and clearer as we've gone through that is the link between the power unit and the, and the chassis is just, you, you can't develop them uh, in, uh, separately now, especially with, with the way that, you know, if you want to get the performance from it, from this development of, of, of non-hardware in the PU, you have to match the PU even more beautifully to the chassis. And, and that's, as I'd say, especially the second half of the season is where some of the gains have been coming. So that's, and that's a great thing for the future as well. So we put the car on the ground uh, in winter testing, that thing bounced like a rabbit. Uh, we came to Bahrain, um, and in pure lap time, considering that the ride was nowhere, we were still not far off. Bahrain, performance-wise, we looked okay. A big sort of chunk of that early activity was about trying to model those things, trying to understand those things in the wind tunnel and CFD, bring experiments to the track to make sure our understanding was correct before we could make progress. The result of that was a, a step in Barcelona, a step where we gave up a, a big chunk of sort of raw wind tunnel performance to try and massively reduce the bouncing. And I think when, what we saw in Barcelona was a car we could now run where we wanted to run it in terms of ride height, but we'd given up a lot of aero performance to get there. So Barcelona uh, came along, we had a solid weekend. I think race pace, we were, we were pretty good. Um, and for me, it seemed that the, the rest of the races until Budapest was really a trial and error. It was trying to correlate what we didn't see in the data yeah. with what was happening on track. And then obviously we finished the first part of the season before summer break really strong with a pole position um, of George. And if I remember correctly, it was a good race. But as we sort of got through Barcelona, had the sort of the high of Barcelona of feeling like we got good performance. We then saw over the next few races other, other issues that were coming in the car, issues with the way we were trying to run the car close to the ground and um, it took us a while to sort of um, get on top of that. Not because we, we couldn't understand it, but actually it takes quite a long time to change these cars around that understanding and, and deliver the performance. Each of the packages we brought sort of moved as a small step in the right direction and then another small step in the right direction. And by Austin, we'd got to a car that um, for me was, wasn't beating Red Bull, but it at least put us in a sensible position and a position where we could say that our development had moved us in the right direction and give us some confidence with what we were doing for the future. So I guess then for me it was difficult and it will be the same for the two of you to manage your expectations because we went to Budapest, we were really good. We knew that the car kind of and the power unit fell into the sweet spot uh, more in the range of the low, kind of low speed high performance that we had. And then we went to Spa, well refreshed after the summer in Monza. We knew that this was very difficult. Our car was too draggy. Even the engine couldn't pull us through the invisible um, aerodynamic wall. And then we literally were nowhere at the beginning. And it looked like a major setback, but I guess it was all part of our understanding where the car performed well um, and how the interaction between drag and PU performance lay. And, and also for you, I, I guess, a good step to, say, to saying, okay, this is where we believe we perform well. This is where we can help the chassis guys also in terms of um, increasing um, um, speed at the end of the straight when the draggy car was probably shedding too much. We've described from the, the PU side how we were, we were we were trying to add performance um, throughout the season by small, small gains at pretty much every event. This is what we were. That, when we came back from um, Bahrain and, and said, "How are we going to? How are we going to do this? How are we going to um, put the performance on the car from our side?" And, and it was really, "Well, look, we're going to have to do small gains every weekend. Just every weekend, just keep picking off a little gain and a little gain and a little gain. And at the same time, don't um, don't compromise the reliability." And that's what we were seeing. And, and we're in some ways a little bit fortunate that you can see some of those numbers on the dyno. You can do the tests on the dyno. You can see there's, we've developed a little bit more energy and we can say, okay, we are taking that to the, to the, to the circuit. And, and it's, it's, it's comforting to be able to watch that and see that working. Um, the other thing by that sort of period of the season, it was becoming very clear that the engines were taking a hell of a pounding. 
you know, the, the, the bottom of the engines. I think when you came up to Bricksworth last week and you saw some of the, um, some of the parts that were, that were off the race engines, it's quite a surprise to see exactly how hard they were being hit by the ground. And, and you know, when you see Lewis and, and, and George looking a bit uncomfortable getting out of the cars, um, the, the PUs were doing much the same. I think it is in a, in a way the perfect storm because what I said that within four months you're not taking a stupid build that suddenly you become totally incompetent when you won a championship in December and then you hit the ground on March and the car is, uh, is much too slow. So it's about uh, keeping, the, keeping the calm, um, relying on your tools or your organization and your, and your values and eventually that I think that was a very positive factor in bringing us back to relative better performance not not where we want it to be but at least uh, we were able then you know get it much better in in austin mexico was a was a positive surprise in a way and then and then uh, brazil obviously where we where we absolutely won on merit we were pretty much ahead in every single session uh, two race victories quickest lap um, one and two and for me um, as much as the learning is more important for next year than winning a race. I think it was a good proof for us that there is inherent pace in the car. Um, if the DNA of the circuit fits that car, which obviously there was not a lot to change during the season, uh, so at least the tools start to correlate, I guess. I think as Nicky used to say, you learn more from failure than you do from success. And I think um, for me, this has been a massive learning year for us. I think what's really interesting to me is to see the reaction that we had after Brazil. It was huge. It almost felt like we'd won a world championship and we'd won one race. And you look at some of the seasons we've had previously, you think, well, it's just one race. But I think that's what showed me the level of passion in, in the organisation, both at Bricksworth and in Brackley, and, and the sort of the desire to get back to that, to get back to winning. And, and I think it's that desire and ambition that will get us there. And if we can take all the learning from this year, turn that into direction for next year, I think that will set us in, in good stead. I studied um, most of the successful sports teams in general that, that dominated an era and then ev eventually started to perform well or fell apart. And there is pretty solid um, reasons that you can trace back why that happened. And I've never seen in our organization a sense of complacency, nowhere. But it's the, 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 the analogy that you said is, is, is quite good. And, and for me, it's like having eight Christmas evenings in, in a row. The, the eight times is not gonna be as exciting um, like, the, like the first time. And I remember saying, okay, this was another race victory, good, we're very happy. Uh, we performed well, we debriefed like it was our first. But I think it's in human nature that you kind of become used to it. And that's why bouncing back in Brazil and seeing the emotions of the team, I had so much pride. It's inter interesting to look at ourselves and see, okay, that is, that, is an, that is an emotion that I haven't seen coming. And it's tremendously fulfilling in a way, although it was one race victory, we finished third in the Constructor Championship. We weren't really on pace with the others, but it is a, another piece of the jigsaw to eventually uh, come back and fight at the very front. What I've seen this year in both factories is when things weren't going well, um, nobody turned on each other, nobody was pointing fingers, everyone was just going, how do we get more performance in our part of the jigsaw? How do we get the car moving forward? And I also saw something which I think will, will help us an awful lot going forward, which is that in both factories we trusted the process. We said, we've got a process, we know how to develop a car. Okay, we've learned something new, so we need to adjust that process and we need to do something a bit differently, but inherently, it's the right way of doing things. And, I've, and I think that, that is something that's very powerful then from when, when we did have the victory in Brazil, that we can look back at that and go, okay, yeah, that process, that general way of doing things is the right way. Yeah, I agree. I, I think the, the interesting thing is, is how we move forward from here. And I think we've got to maintain that scepticism and be honest with ourselves that we were behind at the end of the year. And while I think we made good progress through the year, and I'm really pleased with the culture I've seen. I'm really pleased with the attitude that's been putting, putting every effort into moving us forward. We'll only sort of see the re return on that next year. And also for me, the perspective uh, or the planning is not about short terminism. It's not about a race, even a season or two or five, it's about I would like this team to constantly develop, to be chasing for race victories and championship every single year, 
but not giving it, not, not taking it for granted, not having any sense of entitlement. And if I hear us talking, it's, it almost sounds like the complete disaster of all seasons, but... Um, it felt like it. It felt like it, and I think this is the right feeling. But we finished third in the Constructor Championship. We were very close to Ferrari. We won a race. We had 10 or more or plus podiums. Whatever happens at the beginning of next season, it's going to be another building block for the success of this team. We're trying to be as transparent uh, as we can. Uh, I think it's also helpful to give uh, uh, our fans and followers a little bit more insight into how the season developed and panned out. Having said that, uh, I hope that next year before Christmas we're, we're sitting down and we have more positives uh, to pick than this season. That would be nice. That would be nice. Um, in any case, what we can promise is that all of us um, here in the two factories with the support of Germany, we're going to push flat out um, to have the best possible result and the same kind of scrutiny on our performance will help us um, will help us going forward as human beings as managers and and also as a team